After the Great War, one of the first thoughts rushing through the mind of a survivor would have been of home and their family. Are they still alive? If so, how are they? And more importantly, where are they? While most will never get those answers, some were fortunate enough to have survived alongside their fellow kin, and one such case can be found at the Arenholt farmstead, with Lowell, John, and Sean, three brothers who survived the Great War and continue to live on their family's farmstead. Approaching the farm, the residents can encounter many bloatflies, stingwings, and wild mongrels whose actions play a pivotal role to the brothers' story, but more on them later. Between the three homes is a pickup truck, and in the back is the body of Sean Arenholt. Inside his pocket is a journal. Through this, we learn that Sean died from radiation sickness and Lowell, one of the brothers, repeatedly expressed his desire to travel to Chicago. Sean, along with his other brother, John, doesn't see the point in this and would rather travel south to see if any of their cousins have survived. Now, Chicago is referenced several times throughout the series. It's where Sophia Daguerre lived as a child, Nick Valentine was transferred from Chicago to Boston, Eddie, a companion in Fallout New Vegas, mentions the city, hinting towards an enclave outpost somewhere within the ruins. But the most substantial piece of imagery that we see is during the introduction for Fallout Tactics. Now, Fallout Tactics is semi-canon, so take it with a pinch of rads. The city at first appears to be intact, almost unaffected by the war. However, the camera retreats and we see what actually remains of the city a skeleton of its former self with very little life to be found. I think it's safe to say that travelling south would be much more preferable than going to Chicago. The journal also explains that Lowell has hidden the key to the granary shed, the place where they've stored supplies. It's pretty clear that Sean didn't receive the much needed medicine, which brings into question, where are the other two brothers and what happened to the key? The three homes are empty, void of all life other than the infesting rad roaches, but nearby is a barn, and on the upper level is the body of John Arenholt, and a note inside his pocket. Through this, we learn that Lowell was suspected to have the key to the granary shed, although he wouldn't admit it, instead saying that he had no clue where the key was, and I think this was his own way of punishing the other two after they didn't want to go with him to Chicago a very childish and selfish response to not getting his own way, that, as far as we can tell, got at least one of his brothers killed. The rest of the paper note reveals that John was attacked by rabid dogs, that could potentially be the same mongrels that the resident encounters on the property. John appears to have succumbed to his injuries and, before dying, stated that he's ready to join the rest of his family, meaning that John already knows that Sean has died but Lowell, on the other hand, is still out there, somewhere, and John hopes that he'll one day read the message he's left for him. A short walk away from the farmstead is the ramshackle remains of what looks to be an old shed, and sitting in the bathtub clutching a guitar is the body of Lowell Arenholt, who still holds his last will and testament. Reading through, we learn that while Lowell did in fact have the key to the granary shed and died not knowing what happened to his two brothers, his only regret was not going to Chicago when he had the chance. He also shares with the reader that the granary shed has provisions. I find this really strange, that while Lowell wasn't willing to save his brother's life, he's more than willing to allow a complete stranger access to their supplies. It's unknown how Lowell died, but there is a bee's nest attached to the back of the shed, and he does warn the reader to watch out for those giant flying bats. He is, of course, talking about the Scorch Beasts, but Lowell isn't affected by the Scorch Plague, which makes me think it was something else. And beside his body is an unused Stimpak, so he might have either chosen death or not had the time to use it before passing. Across the field, near the three grain silos, is the Granary Shed, and with the key, the door can finally be opened. Inside, we see that the brothers not only had access to a fairly decent supply of first aid, 
but also a suit of power armor. Lowell could have been planning to use this to make it to Chicago, or it could have belonged to one of the other two brothers. It's not mentioned in any of their notes, which is strange. It's definitely a valuable piece of kit worth talking about. While the story of the three brothers is blatantly displayed for any and all who come here, there is another story that's much more elusive. The only female skeletal remains on the property is on the porch beside a wheelchair. This may or may not be Agatha Arenholt, the brother's sister who was removed before the game's release. According to a piece of cut content, a diary belonging to Agatha, her three brothers were invoked with the public outcry when the state government invoked eminent domain to seize farmland for the construction of a lumber mill. Three of the Arenholt sons, which makes it seem as if there could be more of them, joined the locals and tried to sabotage the mill. Their efforts failed and they were forced into hiding when law enforcement came after them. They hid from the law for a time, but when the vultures showed up, they stubbornly chose to fight in the hope of protecting their land. The vultures eventually killed them, and Agatha fears that she too will suffer the same fate as her brothers. Vultures could just be a nickname that they've given the government since they're picking and scavenging the farmer's land. The note also mentions going into hiding, and inside one of the houses, we can actually see a skeleton hanging through the ceiling. If we go up there, we can see a ladder that the person once used to climb inside, and then pulled that up as well to avoid being spotted. The diary does hint towards there being more than three brothers, so perhaps this was going to be a fourth Arenholt brother. Nothing has been confirmed, and this was just speculation based on a piece of cut content. If Agatha's diary was canon, then Sean, John, and Lowell would have all had different deaths. We don't know if these skeletons are Agatha and another brother, but what we do know is that one selfish act can destroy an entire family. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.